So I made a video the other day about what type of services you may need when you're building out a SaaS product. And I have a bunch of different services that you could potentially pay for, or you could try to roll these yourself or just kind of do your own thing. Now, a couple of people have commented saying that this is kind of crazy. Like you don't need all these services to run an application. Um, one person left a comment that you could actually run everything just with a single VPS. And I think there's some truth behind, you know, you don't need all these services, but also at the same time, running your own stuff on your own little VPS server is also not the best solution for production system, in my opinion. Let's just go ahead and break down some of the costs of something. For example, like hosting on Vercel, let's say you actually have a product that's getting some users. How much does it cost to host monthly? I think their pricing plan is about $20 a month plus whatever usage you may go over with limits. Okay, so $20 a month. If you were to think about the average software engineer salary, let's let's look at that real quick. So if you do a quick little Google search, this indeed.com says it's about this much. So $116,000 a year. So let's just go ahead and break that down into 52 weeks and there's 40 hours in a week. So this is their average uh, pay per hour, $56 an hour. So if you kind of approach this from a business standpoint, it costs $56 an hour to pay someone to build software. Now again, I'm scoping everything I'm talking about in the United States because that's where I live. So that's what most of my content is based around. But with that being said, if it costs $56 an hour, not including whatever overhead you may have when you hire someone to your company, it's very hard to justify not using one of these services, right? So how much time and effort would it take for you to set up your own CI CD pipeline process that hooks in the GitHub to automatically build and deploy your code to your own VPS service when someone makes code changes? If it's less than an hour, if you're that good and you can do it in less than an hour and do it perfectly, then yeah, you may justify being able to not pay $20 a month for a hosting platform like Vercel or Netlify. But in reality, coding is never simple, right? So $56 an hour, how many months of Vercel hosting would that be? That's about two and a half months. So can you justify building your own hosting pipeline on a VPS that's $5 a month just so you can say $20 a month? I, I don't think so. So hosting $20 a month for Vercel or most of these services, or you can do it yourself for really cheap with SST. So let's move on to logging. Again, in a production system, you need to have logging. If you don't, I don't know how you're checking to see if stuff goes wrong, how many API endpoints are getting hit, who's hitting what API endpoints. If a user contacts you and says, hey, I am having issues doing this feature in your application. If you don't have a way to actually look at your logs, then I would say that you're not running a production ready system. Now there are ways to basically set up logs for free. For example, you can set up the Elk stack, which is Elasticsearch that kind of aggregates all your logs into a nice search index. And then you can use Logstash that lives on your VPS or your dedicated server to collect the logs and ship them to Elasticsearch. And then you have Kibana, which is a nice UI that basically allows you to do all this stuff. Now, unless you're really good at servers and like system administration, logging into the VPS and setting this stuff up and connecting it to Elasticsearch and making sure Kibana is configured correctly, you are guaranteed to spend more than an hour trying to set this stuff up unless you've already done it before. So again, it's probably worth money paying another service $20 a month or however much these services cost a month. Sometimes it can be like $100 a month to be able to search through your logs and get beautiful analytic graphs, filters and whatever aggregations and like dashboards so you can actually get a nice view of what's going on in your system. And you set up an entire production ready logging system in less than an hour or less than two hours. Because again, every hour you're paying an engineer $56 an hour, that is money that you could actually be spending on building out your product or your features. You kind of have to keep on, on weighing this out, right? If you're not using a pre-existing service to kind of do some of these things, you're paying an engineer to do them for you. And there's a lot of overhead cost with building your own systems, right? For example, if you're hosting your node server on a VPS, you have to keep in track of security updates that need to be done on that VPS, right? You probably set it up with an Ubuntu version, new versions come out, you have to update those, keep them up to date. Your node stuff has to be updated, your node versions have to be updated, which is gonna involve you kind of going to the machine, trying to figure out a way to like update those things without affecting users. Maybe you just wanna turn the node service off, do the updates and turn it back on. But again, every, Every hour you spend doing these manual processes is an hour that you've wasted that you could have been using to build out cool features 
in your application. Now, databases, this is something I would never recommend you hosting yourself on your own VPS instance, although you could. It just seems risky to me. If you're the type of person who says that you want to do a VPS and host like a, a, a Postgres database on your VPS and connect that to your node instance that's running on the machine, same machine, there's a lot of security things you have to consider to make sure that no one can ever get access to your database. Make sure you have correct firewall set up. Make sure you have correct security set up and password set up. It's just a lot of overhead, like I said, and you're not going to know that if you're a beginner, you have to kind of learn that over the years, that it's going to take you much longer than an hour, in my opinion, than just using a pre-existing service to give you a already running Postgres database. For example, you can use Supabase, which has a Postgres instance on it. Um, you can use Planet Scale. I'm going to go ahead and update these because I think for some reason I put databases instead of actual services. Um, you could use Mongo Atlas. Okay, and again, these are gonna cost 20 bucks a month as well. So now we're at 20, 40, 60 dollars a month to pay for some of these core things that your production system will need. And right then and there, if you can say that you have saved your your developers an hour or yourself an hour of working, then it already pays for itself. It already pays for itself, right? Now, some of these things like you have to have like Stripe for payment processing, you can't really get around that unless you find something else. If you're the type of person who says, I'm going to host my thing on a VPS and I'm going to SSH into it all the time or run a script that connects to the box and kind of does a git pull and then restarts my node server. Like, yeah, like you can do that. But honestly, like, why would you want to do that? There's services out there that automatically deploy directly from your GitHub repo when you make changes. So I think it's a kind of a waste of time to build your own deployment pipeline when you could just use, use something like Vercel or Netlify or, or DigitalOcean. I believe, um, let me go up to hosting real quick. I believe DigitalOcean, I like DigitalOcean a lot. DigitalOcean, they have like app deploy, which basically hooks in to your CI CD pipeline to do deployments when stuff um, finishes. Let me go ahead and add um, Firebase. People got mad that I didn't add Firebase here, but Firebase is again a service, like a backend as a service that it has authentication in it. Firebase. There's also like tons of Google Cloud stuff. Go ahead and add like Google GCP just to kind of update this diagram as I'm going through it. But my, my overall point I'm trying to make is if you're in the comments talking about how like you would save like, why would you use all these services? Like, seems like a giant, um, it, it seems crazy. Honestly, the setup that it takes once you have these services set up is just hook these to your credit card and they're just going to charge your credit card every month. And once you have this thing integrated with your application, there's not much additional overhead needed to have your actual running production system hooking into these existing services, right? It's kind of like a, a set it up once and you forget about it. Um, a lot of people argue that like you should do your own auth, like you shouldn't be using an auth service, um, which works okay. I mean, like for example, if you're using like Ruby on Rails or using like Django, I think there's something called Adonis JS, which is kind of like a Laravel thing for Node, which has um, authentication built in, like with social authentication and stuff. You cannot use an existing auth service if you want to, but I will say that like you gotta kind of make sure you're doing auth correctly. I will say that personally, when I log into a new website, if they ask for email password authentication and that's the only option they have, I won't even use your application. I would rather have social media login, okay? And you can achieve that with next auth. Like you don't have to pay um, an auth service to kind of achieve that. But if you're the type of person who wants to have email password login, I would say that this is where you get into like realms of like, you gotta make sure you're doing this right because if you screw it up, you can get into a lot of legal trouble. For example, I worked at a company when I first started learning about web development where all of the passwords in the user's table were just plain text passwords. As an intern, I was actually able to go in and I could see all of the passwords for thousands of users. They weren't doing any type of bcrypt or salt on the passwords. They were just plain text passwords. And that made me realize that I'm sure there's tons and tons and tons of companies out there who are rolling their own off who aren't properly setting up how they're storing user credentials. So me personally, if I see a new application and they don't have social media login, I am not interested. I'm not gonna type in my email and password because honestly, everyone uses the same password for every single application they have. And if one data breach happens on a service, then basically your password gets leaked and people can start trying all these other services with your email and password combinations and they can potentially get access to a lot of different things. So I rather have the MFA set up with like Google and just log into everything using Google Auth. That's another reason why like rolling your own stuff, like you can do it if you're really smart and you want to waste your time doing that stuff. But overall, me personally, I rather just reach for a service um, instead of doing it myself. For example, file storage. If you're the type of person who wants to say that, oh, you could just host your own 
node service on a VPS, how are you going to store your files? Let's say you allow the user ability to upload files and you have one malicious user who decides that he's just going to keep on uploading a one megabyte file in a for loop on a script until he fills up your entire storage on your disk and then your entire VPS crashes because you don't have some type of infinitely scaling storage. So like I personally would never store files directly on the VPS. I would offload those to like S3 or some other type of file hosting services. So it's like all these things you have to think about. I feel like I'm just kind of repeating myself by now, but like there's just a lot more that goes into it. Um, you could save money by just using a VPS, but you have to keep in mind that there's trade-offs. You're going to be spending a lot of time doing your own stuff, managing your own stuff, maintaining your own stuff, um, which is why you have to like make the decision to like use a service versus rolling it your own. The last point I'm going to hit on about like why I would probably never host my own production system on a VPS. Personally, Node.js gives me a lot of anxiety when it's not running on serverless. And it's mainly because if your server either runs out of memory or crashes for whatever reason on an on-caught exception, that means that every single person who's currently trying to write data into your API or like fetch data from your API is going to get disconnected until whatever hacky process you set up to basically restart that server kicks off. For example, you can use PM2 on your VPS to have it restart your node service if it were to crash. But again, every time your server crashes, you're basically losing every single connection. And every person who did that post request, their data is not going to be stored. They're going to have some downtime. So that's one reason why I really like hosting everything on serverless. Everything runs in its own, like, I don't want to say isolated runtime. But every API request has its own CPU and memory so that if that request were to fail, it doesn't affect the requests of every other um, user. Let me show you a reason why I just typically stay away from just having like a dedicated node process running your server. Here we have an endpoint called hello. And after half a second, it throws an error instead of a set timeout. Um, and other than that, I mean, it should return hello or hi. And you think as a developer, you can say try catch. And if any errors were to happen, you can just go ahead and console log those. And then I'm going to run my server with TSX here. So we have a server that's running. I can go ahead and go up here and click refresh. I'm going to hit the hello endpoint. But now notice that it's dead. The reason it's dead is because when an exception happens inside this set timeout callback, it actually crashes your entire server. OK, so then you're relying on PM2 to restart your server so that other requests can continuously happen. But all it takes, if you have an API that has like hundreds of endpoints, all it takes is one developer to accidentally write some bad code like this and literally your entire uh, server is going to crash. And I know there's ways to prevent this. Like you can basically say on unhandled rejections, just go ahead and console log um, errors. Or I could just say like don't throw errors here. Let's just go ahead and restart that again. And I don't think this will crash next time that exception. But I would say if you don't even know about this, and this is probably a reason why you shouldn't be hosting your server on a VPS, or you should be using some type of, um, you should, probably shouldn't be using Express. Maybe you should be using Nest.js that might have this already set up for you. Um, because these are things that can actually happen on your server. More specifically, let's say you're doing like CVS processing, you're generating PDF files and you use a lot of memory on the machine. And for whatever reason, your node process dies then every user who's connected to your server also just loses their session, okay? So those are the things that kind of go into my thought process when people say, oh, you could just host your own thing on like a, a digital ocean VM for $5 a month. And it's like, yeah, you could, but honestly, I would never do that on a real production ready system where a client's paying you a ton of money to build something that's reliable. That is not the approach for doing that. All right, that kind of wraps up this video. I just wanted to make a video to explain why a lot of companies reach out to third-party services to offload that work because when you have dedicated engineers who are building a database hosting site or a file storage site, it kind of alleviates a lot of that anxiety that you may have if you're doing that yourself. All right, that's it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. Leave a comment below if you have any uh thoughts about what I mentioned here. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join. If you want to find a place to hang out and talk to some other developers, have a good day and happy coding.